Hey folks, Dr. Mike here for Renaissance Periodization, video number five for strength training made simple. How long should you rest between your strength training sets? Well, it turns out we have a pretty simple four step checklist formula that if you check every single one of these boxes, you're ready to go. Now you can always rest a little longer after you've checked the boxes, but as soon as you've checked the boxes, you're cleared. Before you've checked the boxes, not a good idea to go just yet. The next set you do will not be of as high a quality as it could have been. So here are the boxes. Box number one, your prime movers, meaning like if you're bench pressing, that's your chest, front delts, and triceps. If you're squatting, it's your quads, glutes, so on and so forth. The muscles that really make the movement go, if they're no longer burning or crampy or feel drained, you can check that box. That doesn't mean you're ready to go yet, but if they are feeling crampy, burn, or draining, if someone's like, all right, next set of squats and your quads are still cramped up and burning, do not go yet. Number two, your cardio will not limit you on your next set. So if you finish a set of deadlifts and rest three minutes and your training partner's like, what do you think? Set number two and you're like, yeah, I'm ready. Uh, 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 hold on. Definitely hold on, okay? Your breathing should not be 100% normal, but return to pretty much normal where you're not having a huge, what's called tidal volume. Your lungs aren't going up and down like this. If you're breathing, then you're good to go because your cardio probably won't limit you on your next set then. If you start your set of say three to six reps before your breathing is returned to normal, you risk the problem of like you're on set, uh, rep number five. And it's not that you don't have the driving strength to hit it. It's that on the way down, you're like, <gasps> and you start running out of air. Your cardio is limiting you. We're not there to train your cardiovascular system. We're there to train your muscle strength which has to mean that it's the limiting factor, not cardio stopping you way too soon. Point number three, your nervous system slash psychology doesn't limit you on the next set, okay? What does that mean? That means it, it's tough to measure these things, but sort of colloquially in, in, in ecological real time, it means that you feel strong again, okay? If you just hit a big set of four on the bench press and rack the bar, 10 seconds later, someone could be like, do you feel strong? No, if it was a big set of four, like, oh, I feel drained, like everything's gone. Ugh, you wanna shrivel up and die in the corner. But after a few minutes, you get that oomph back. You know what I'm talking about? Like you're like, no, I can push some weight. I can push some weight. Specifically, because you've probably been training for strength for a little while, you kind of know yourself and you know how oomph that feeling has to be for you to know you're going to hit that next set. So let's say the last set of five was pretty tough, not too tough. How strong do you have to feel to know you're going to get the next planned set of five? If you question it, don't do it yet. Rest longer. So if you're kind of like, oh, I feel pretty strong. I don't know if I'm five reps strong yet at this weight I have planned. Hold up, rest another 30 seconds, rest another minute. The longer you rest, there's not much downside there. Just take a little bit more time in the gym, rest it up. And then after a minute, you're like, all right, no, I'm for sure ready, right? So there's no point in rushing with this feeling of strength, okay? Lastly, there are no synergist muscles, the ones that help out that are gonna limit your next set. So for example, if your quads feel really great after a set of squats, but your lower back is still tight or your lower back is still burning or still tired, don't go yet because then your lower back will be the limiting factor and it won't allow you to train your legs for strength, which is one big purpose of the squat and it'll turn the squat mostly into a lower back movement. Huge take home message here is if you think you need a little bit more rest, take it. There's no real downside to taking a little bit more rest. You're just gonna have a higher quality next set and next set and next set. I'll tell you this, hypertrophy training is about quality, but a lot of it's about smashing in that stimulus. Strength training is nearly all about quality. You gotta get tons of force production. You gotta be pretty close to at your best for every working set. And if that means resting an extra 30 seconds versus resting not 30 seconds enough, having a high quality set that costs you an extra 30 seconds rest versus a lower quality set that you're like, you know, I should have gotten five, I got four, my technique broke down because I was too tired. It's not worth it. So erring on the side of more is always good. So just two really quick examples here of how this might look. Let's say you're doing sets of five with 500 pounds and your max is 585, six plates. It's a pretty tough set of a really, really tough exercise. So number one, your prime movers are no longer burning, crampy or drained. Let's say after about 60 seconds, it makes sense. After 60 seconds, your quads feel fine. After about two minutes, your cardio is not limiting you. So, you know, at one minute in after that set of five, you're like, <sighs> 
yeah, still, still breathing pretty heavy. After two minutes, hypothetically, some of us, it might take five. After two minutes, you're feeling pretty good cardio-wise and you're ready to go. Now, your nervous system and psychology, like a set of five at 500 when your max is 585, that's a big, big set. It might take you five minutes and there's nothing wrong with that to feel like you're really strong again or ready to do another set of something like five reps. So that's five minutes and notice it's in bold because that's our limiting factor. It's the longest rest interval we have there. And lastly, no synergists will limit you. Well, you know, synergists tend to recover about as fast as prime movers. So after 60 seconds, those are good, but that doesn't really matter. So in that case, how long do you rest? Well, it's the longest of all of these four checklist times, which is to say five minutes. So your synergists are good, your prime movers are good, your cardio is good way before your psychological strength comes back. You feel great and then everything else is checklisted and then that's your fourth checklist. You go in and at five minutes and no sooner, you're ready to hit it again. Now, can you rest five minutes and 30 seconds, six minutes, six plus? Totally, just don't rest so long you know, 10 minutes or more that you actually feel cold and your psychology for uh, strength has actually declined. You're like, oh my God, I've like, waited too long. I need to rewarm up. Definitely don't do that. But that's like minutes and minutes, minutes later. You should have a real easy middle ground there. We've definitely passed that five minute threshold or whatever it takes and then not rested too long to get cold. Last example really quick of a much easier lift because not all strength training is maximal. Let's say you are a 585 pound squatter, same squatter, but it sets a five with 350 pounds in the squat. This is like technique and recovery work. So prime movers are no longer burning after about 45 seconds. Your cardio will not limit you on the next set after only about a minute and a half. It's all it takes. It's really not that hard of a lift. 60 seconds for your nervous system psychology to come back because for the love of God, it was 350 pounds for five. You could do 585 for single. It's not remotely near your 1RM, not that hard. And no sooner just limit you after 45. The longest of those is cardio. Uh, so basically after you stop breathing heavy during recovery work, one and a half minutes later, look, that's so different than five minutes, but you're ready to go. And here's the last fundamental take home point. Notice in the same person with the same lift, just different loading, Never mind the different lifts, we have two radically different rest times. So anyone that says, hey, you should rest two minutes for strength and one minute for hypertrophy is at the end of the day, maybe has some silver lining to that good advice, but really it's not the greatest advice. Rest as long as you need to have a quality set performance according to the four checklists and you'll be well on your way. Folks, see you next time for the next video.